Hi, I'm Chris from Driver Training. Welcome to our cockpit drill for when we get in the car. So generally, we refer to it as DH treble SM. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that the door is closed properly. Remember, the door has a two-stage locking system. So it might click, but it doesn't mean it's closed. And we've got usually about five ways of telling that it's not closed properly. The first is the sound of the door. So when you close it, it should make a clunk or a thud rather than a click. The second way is, is the internal light still on? If it stays on, it's probably not closed. The third way, is there a warning light on the dashboard in front of you? Uh, some cars will have this. The fourth way, as you start to drive, you might hear a buzzer or a beeping noise to warn you that the door isn't closed properly. The fifth way, although your mirrors aren't set up yet, so you might need to move around just to check, is to look in your mirror and just see if the door is straight or what they call flush down the side and it's not disjointed or sticking out, which would mean it's not closed properly. When it comes to opening the door, the highway code now recommends what's called the Dutch reach method. When we open the door normally, we use the hand that is closest to the door to pull the handle. And then what happens is our elbow leans against the door and kind of pushes it open. Now, the trouble with that is if it's a windy day, the door can be thrown open before you have chance to control it. The second problem with opening the door like this is that your body is still facing forwards so that you can't actually see what's coming from behind the vehicle before you open the door. So with the Dutch reach method, what happens is the hand furthest from the door leans across to actually pull the handle while the hand closest to the door is kept in the door grip to control it. So we use the hand that is furthest from the handle to open it, whilst the other hand controls the door. Now, the second point with this is, as you do that, your body is already twisting to see what is behind you. And that makes you more aware of if there are any bikes, scooters, e-bikes or e-scooters, coming past you before you open that door and cause potentially an accident. So the next part then is our handbrake. If you have the older style ratchet handbrake, then when you get in, we recommend that you just pull it up to make sure that it is actually on. The reason for that is if it isn't on properly, the more people and the more weight that gets in the car, the more likely the car is to move. So all you need to do is put your hand on the handbrake, pull it up on the ratchet until you feel resistance, and then to release it, you lift the handbrake up, press the button, and lower it down. So you pull it up on the ratchet, wait till you feel resistance, then that's it. To release it, lift the lever first, then push the button to let it down. Now, if you've got the new type electronic handbrakes, you don't have to worry about that because it automatically comes on. And then sometimes you have to press it to release it. At other times, depending on the car, you may just need to drive off and it disengages automatically. So that's the door and the handbrake. So next is the seat. Now, the seat has four functions, up and down, forward and back, the rake and the headrest. So the first thing we do is adjust the up and down. 
Now, there's normally a lever in the middle of your seat, again, depending on your car. And very often it's pump action. So if you keep pumping it up, the height of the seat will go up. The one towards the back of the seat very often is for the rake, the backrest. So it's good just to sit there and feel where the um, levers are for both of these. Because not every car seat will go up or down. Um, it may just have the rake or the backrest. We want to get the height of the seat so that we've got a good view of the road ahead, but we're not too close to the roof of the car. Neither do we want to be too low that we're having to either sit up bolt straight um, or look over, try and stretch to look over the top of the steering wheel. Just adjust it so you've got a good view of the road ahead. Then we have the forward and back. So normally there's a bar at the front of the seat. So with your left hand, you would hold on to the steering wheel. With the right hand, you would lift the lever up and that allows you to move the chair forwards and backwards. Now, what you want to be able to do if you're in a manual car is press the clutch pedal all the way to the floor without stretching or if you're in an automatic to be able to press the brake and the accelerator again without stretching. With the rake or the backrest of the chair you want to position that not so that you're bolt upright like the picture on the left and incredibly close to the wheel because you've got to think that wheel has an airbag in it so if the airbag goes off, it's meant to cushion you as you go forward. If you're sitting really close to it, one, you're not going to be able to turn the wheel properly. But two, if the airbag goes off, it's likely to just punch you in the face more than anything else. But also, we don't want to be that far back that our arms are stretched out straight because what that means is when it is time to turn the wheel, we're not going to have much control over it. So sitting too far back is no good either. So we want to be in a position where we can put our hands to the top of the wheel, slide them down to about halfway. And you should just have a gentle bend in your arms. And as you extend your arms, your wrists should just be on the side of the steering wheel. That means we've got good control of the wheel and can turn it. So that now brings us to the head restraint. You just need to adjust the head restraint so that as you put your head against it and run your hand across the top of your ear, the top of your ear is approximately in the middle of the head restraint. Now, depending on your height and the, the length of the seat, that may alter. But generally, that's where we'd want to try and get it. So that's the door, handbrake, seat. Now we go on to steering wheel. In most modern vehicles, the steering wheel is adjustable. There's a lever on the left and the wheel will move up and down and in and out. We want to adjust it so that we've got a good view of the dials, especially with the speedo. Can we see the zero? Can we see 70? But also, can we see the fuel gauge as well? Because sometimes if the wheel isn't set up properly, this will be your view. And the trouble with that is anything in this case below 30, you won't know if you're in a 20 zone, you won't know if you're braking that speed limit, but also you won't be able to tell when you're running low or out of fuel. So we want to position it that we've got a good view of the dials in front of us or the clocks and also of the road ahead. We also then want to position it so that we can put our hands comfortably on the wheel. We generally say that the 10 and 2 position or 9 and 3 position are best when we're learning to drive. It helps us to not cross our arms and keep control of the steering. And to be honest, these days, the DVSA aren't so strict on it because of the advancement of power steering. As long as when you're turning, your arms don't cross and lock into a position where you can't keep turning, 
then to be honest, the DVSA now don't mind if your arms do cross. But to begin with, to avoid that, it is better to use these positions. So that's door, handbrake, seat, steering wheel. Then we go on to seat belt. Now, when we put the seat belt on, we use the hand that is opposite the seat belt that helps pull it across. And we just need to make sure that the seat belt is flat and not twisted. The reason for that is if it is twisted, it takes longer to react. And if it is twisted, it will dig into your chest when it does react and leave a huge bruise on your chest bone. So that brings us to the final point, then mirrors. There are three main mirrors in the vehicle. Your interior mirror, which is made of flat glass, and that provides the most accurate picture of what's behind you. Then you have the side mirrors. Now, they're made of convex glass. Now, what that means is they give a slightly wider field of vision, but therefore make things look smaller and further away than they actually are. So we have to use these in pairs. If we're going left, center and left. And if we're going right, center and right. And that gives us a fairly good all round picture of what's going on behind the car. Now, as well as that, there's also blind spot mirrors, which we use, which are the smaller type of mirrors that go on to the main side mirrors. And that extends our field of vision to the side even further. So to set the center mirror up, we use our left hand in the left edge of the mirror. The reason we use our left hand is when we use our right hand, our shoulder will come off the seat. So we're actually altering the view when we sit back. So we want to use the left hand on the left edge of the mirror plastic. That way we don't get any chocolatey thumbprints or palm prints on the glass, which then when light showing it will kind of distort it and make it off putting. So what we want to do is line up the back window in line with the mirror, like putting a picture in a picture frame. So we want the top of the back window in line with the top of the mirror, the bottom of the back window in line with the bottom of the mirror, and just in the final quarter on the right of the mirror, you just want to see the edge of your head restraint. Now we want to adjust the side mirrors. So for the driver's side mirror, we need to adjust it so that the front door handle is in the bottom left hand corner of the mirror. For the passenger mirror, we want again the front door handle, but this time in the bottom right hand corner of the mirror. That's going to give us a good view of just the edge of the side of our car and then everything to the side of it. So that's our car now set up and ready to drive. So we hope this video has helped you if you're just starting to learn to drive. If there was anything that you weren't sure of, then feel free to leave us a comment, let us know, and we'd be happy to help. So my name's Chris from Driver Training Limited. Don't forget to check out our other level one videos for learners the first time of doing it so that it helps build your knowledge. And of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with more helpful and handy driving tips. So remember, keep well, drive safely and we'll see you all again in our next video.